Okay, what's up, hello gamers? I guess this is a video almost all of you have been waiting for. And okay, so who am I to deny what people actually want? So okay, okay. Um, jokes aside, I know this is a very requested video, and first and foremost, uh, sorry for the graphical issues because I'm using Yuzu at the moment. Um, just because I believe it is way easier to set up the training mod pack. So, if anything, I guess I'll link the um, the link to the mod pack in down in the description. Cause like it's been a, already a while since you can just use it in Yuzu, so it is pretty useful. And okay, okay. So what's the deal? The first thing I want to showcase about clay pigeon combos is that. The audio cues are actually probably the, the best thing you can rely on in order to get it more consistently. Right now, I just set up the CPU to just mash as soon as it is available. But what is the first thing you want to know? Okay, try to close your eyes and listen to this. Okay, that's the main the main audio cue you have to rely in order to get this consistently. So how how will you know if you're getting right or if you're getting wrong? This is like a rush version. It is very slightly um fast compared to the other version. I I tested it out. This is way too fast. This as well a little bit too fast, but this is the, the right one. Okay, so that's the first thing you want to do in order to get it consistently. And I highly suggest you to try to just listen how the timing is, because this is way too slow. I mean, I believe it can actually work, but there are some characters with frame one escape options that will actually uh, pop out from the combo, that, like Bayonetta or Yoshi and maybe other duck hunts as well, snake. So you have to get the, the timing the best as you can. Also, other factors that might do the clay pigeon combo more consistent is getting the right distance. Like, I believe this is like the best way you can uh, ensure you're, you're getting the clay pigeon combo, but there's a catch. If you use the smash input, Okay, I, I got it, but it is a little bit more hard to get than usual, mainly because um, the slower the clay pigeon go, the sooner you will be out of the, of the um, how do you call it, the end lag, you know? There is a gap where you're like, you're you just like finish your end lag and you can detonate the, the side B, so you have to get used to how much is a very is a reliable distance to get it oh uh, and a very important thing is that you have to wait until your opponent has like 46 percent ish it might be a little bit less in if you have enough rage and but if you want to get it way uh, more consistently i suggest you to try out f more than 50 percent Okay. At the end of the day, it it is it just becomes like muscle memory. So so you might want to wonder what are the inputs I actually do for clay pigeon combos. Well, uh, I'm gonna show you the other way. So I'm gonna show you my raw inputs, which are different from the user smash input, since as you can see, I was pressing the B button uh, a lot for clay pigeon combos. But actually, I use the Y button for my special, and X for jump. And why would you ask? Well, mainly because it is way easier to do a short hop side B with it. You see? So that way, I just have to, to use my thumb in order to press both buttons at the same time, without even rely on lifting my thumb uh, compared to using the Y and B button, which is 
probably more speci more usual than than using the X to jump. But the other way around would be like using the Y button and then X button. It is the same, but just at the other way around. Okay. So this is my main suggestion in order to get it more consistently. Unless you use your trigger buttons to jump and try to make an auto short hop. Unless you're already already used to short hop with just a single button. With just a single trigger button. Which I wouldn't be able to get it because... To, <laughs> a funny, funny thing is that I actually suck at using my trigger buttons. Like at a cancel I use it with the claw method. And I get it way more consistent than... Than with with the triggers, so that's just a uh, me thing. But in order to make a workaround without modifying my controllers that much, I highly suggest to use the X or the Y button as this, your special move. Maybe because it is also very really useful to just like move around with the can. It is way easier to do it that way. But okay, so. What are some of the most typical routes you can do on most characters? Well, I believe you can just um, sort most of the characters in, I believe, five categories. The light characters and floaty ones at the same time, light characters and fast followers, um, regular characters like, I don't know, like humanoid characters like Pete, Marth, uh, maybe Mario, but he's a little bit smaller and heavy characters as well, heavy and light and heavy and fast followers, which would be like the five main categories. So this is probably one of the most optimal routes you can do against some characters. But the main thing is that most characters you can't get... Um, Kill confirms without making some risks, and this is why I don't like using this combo as much as I used to. This is like the most standard you can do. Okay, so it deals a lot of damage, almost 50%, and it, it is pretty useful in order to just like make a swing between stock differences and what other equivalent combos you can do against these kind of characters which I highly suggest because like if you're not gonna kill with clay pigeon it is kind of hard to to justify its uses so just back throw can it is almost the same person like five percent difference almost so don't try to rely on clay pigeon combos that much against these sort of characters, mainly because it is way easy, uh, harder to get them. This is another one you have to get very consistent. If you wanna justify the use of clay pigeon, you wanna get your stocks. Clay pigeon into back air is one of the most important things you have to do with Duck Hunt. Uh, at least in order to get some stocks, right? So I believe at around 100%, it is kind of easy to get this on on tall characters. But I wouldn't try to go for double clay pigeon just because of this. I'm gonna make my opponent to make a random DI. Oh, okay, so I can just um, use some of these at random. So that's the eye in, and that's the eye out. And what's the problem? Whenever my opponent does the eye in, the short hop clay pigeon won't hit. But it is absolutely possible. But as you can see, you have to make a lot of risks against this kind of characters. So that's very important to know. 
And okay, so another thing related to this is that whenever you get to like around 78%, that's when your opponent is gonna fall for tumble animation against clay pigeon. And what's the deal with that? Do you see that smoke, the red smoke that my opponent gets? Okay, so as soon as you see that the smoke, um, the eye will be a factor in this combo. And this is very important because the only thing I can justify regarding Clay Pigeon is that it won't send the opponent in a tumble animation. So under 75%, the eye won't be a factor and everything will be 100% consistent. And I believe there is a little sweet spot where you can just like make a single read with the DI because as you can see This is a very useful combo if you if the opponent if you can read or guess the opponent's DI then you have a kill confirm so it is very useful to know But as you can see, just one single DI will mess up everything. So this is why I don't like to rely that much on killing with uh, more than one clay pigeon against these kind of characters because it is a risk. So you might want wanna mess up with your advantage state. To summarize, remember. At around 50%, you can just like chain two or more clay pigeons against this kind of character, which is the most common archetype. At around 75%, clay pigeon won't, uh, will start sending the opponent at a tumble animation. So the eye will be a factor and it is way more, way harder to get these combos. And at around 100% at the ledge, you can do um, clay pigeon into rare backer. You have to land the sweet spot. But otherwise, if you if you can catch the opponent, you can just also do downer, which I just kind of like, just because it doesn't have a sour spot, so it is a little bit easier to to land. You see, the only thing is that downer kind of sucks knockback wise. Like, um, as you can see, Pete already had the chance to air dodge, which of course, it isn't the way, the optimal way to recover, but it won't kill at 100%. It will rely a little bit more on rage. Oh, speaking of rage, remember that rage will also factor on on the minimum percent required to send the opponent at a stumble animation. So remember, I already told you that at 70%, you can still do a uh, clay pigeon change without relying on the eye. Well. Let's go to a pretty nice percentage. With a little bit of rage, you will send the opponent in a tumble animation. So clay pigeon will actually be harder to do when you have more rage. Okay, so um, super lightweight characters are kind of an um, interesting case. And I believe only Jigglypuff and Game Watch fall into this category. But it is good to know that Everything regarding the 50% rule also applies to these characters. But the only difference is that you have to full hop the second clay pigeon. With a little bit of rage, you can do nasty stuff and kill at super early percent. If you are able to do a double jump back here, you'll get the kill, okay? So that's the difference between make, making a full hop um, upper and a double jump backer. So you have to get, um, you have to get some practice against these characters. So it is super useful. But other than that, you have to remember that the tumbling animation is still a thing. So I believe 60% will be, it. oh, not really. 
Okay, so at 60% you won't have to rely on double jump, so that's very good to know. Okay, so 67. Tumble animation, so it will be harder to get this combo. But this might apply to Game & Watch as well, so you have to get used to. Okay, so this is like the regular size character, but with a very false, um, very high fall speed. This one is kind of tricky because you want to get the grand version. Okay. But this one is very useful because you can just like, if you're at this part of the stage, This is very consistent. And another useful thing you want to know, you have to know with this kind of setups, is that whenever you detonate your side V before the opponent touches the ground, uh, the opponent will be sent out higher. But if you wait just a little bit until the opponent touches the ground, the opponent won't be able to shield and it won't pop up as high as he was in the air. So that way you can do the setup you just saw. Hold on. You see? This one is very useful against some this sort of characters. So I believe uh check out the follow chart in order to get uh, which characters you can do some stuff like that. Of course, it won't be 100% accurate, but these setups will be very useful. There we go. It takes some practice, but you can just get this very reliably against this this class of characters. And other than that, it isn't very advisable to try other stuff, mainly because it will uh, depend on the eye eventually. So just practice this and you'll be fine. Against this kind of characters, I highly suggest to um, try to make a grounded first, uh, a grounded clipigian right after the first one and then try to get as many short hop clay pigeons you can and there is a very interesting part with these characters i mean depending on how fast fallers they are you have to either try to get the second clay pigeon in the ground or with a short hop um so my mistake uh, everyone has to learn eventually So these are kind of most of the most boring um, characters in that sense, mainly because you have to rely on platform extensions and you can get even like four clay pigeons. And mainly because staling is a thing. As you can see, past 80% you won't get the tumble animation too. So with enough practice, you can just keep practicing against these kind of characters. And I believe that will be it, like the most important variations. But there are some characters where it is very hard to get like a consistent uh, clay pigeon combo. Like Diddy Kong. And some of the reasons because it is a bit harder is that because first she's short. So that's a very is big issue and also uh, his fall speed is just the right one in order to avoid most of the clay pigeon combos
Sí. So, I wouldn't suggest you to extend a lot with clip pigeon combos because it is way harder to get them and you won't get as much damage as you will do with like the can which is way safer to use okay so um what can i tell you as a uh, closing follow-ups okay that was neat um remember that you will get punished if you use clay pigeon way too much it is one of the laggiest moves in the game probably one of the laggiest special moves other than Funko Punch and Warlock Punch and maybe some other clones of those moves so some stuff I can recommend you is to use it as a, um, as a shield pressure tool rather than try to force it in a combo Oh uh, wait, uh, defensive settings um shield toggles hold okay and frame advantage okay frame advantage um i believe the frame advantage won't be shown here in the in this version. I'm not sure, not very sure why. Okay, but something very important to know is that uh clay pigeon is actually safe on shield. It is positive. So if you detonate the clay pigeon right before um, you you will be able to move, it is kind of safe to pressure. And against some characters that may be a very big issue because they cannot rely on, on stage positioning like Snake with his grenades and stuff like that, you know. So that's very useful to know and I believe that will be everything for this mini guide. So hopefully you will get some information about this and remember to practice and be conscious on the risk of the move and try to be as optimal as possible because otherwise just use any other move.